Hello? <laughs> hey! Hey everyone! I wasn't sure if we were online. I think we are now. How's everyone going? I see some people already tuning in. Let me know if you can see me or, or hear me. Have the chat on. Cool. All right, I think we are all set and ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so um, welcome to the stream, guys. I will do a quick rundown of what we did last couple of streams so that you can, you know, just a quick recap. And then we're going to get into the, the the good stuff, which is, you know, I'm going to show you some of the, the, the things and the features that I've been working on with uh, the new Zero 2020, uh, which is currently what I have open here. And as you can, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's a slightly, some, some slight changes in my UI. So um, I can I can also run through those if you um, if you're keen, uh, just because I want to show you how how powerful some of the new tools are and why I added them to the to the UI. Um, I still cannot see the chat, so I just want to type it here. Because otherwise, oh, okay, no, it's working. Right, so I can see um, it is working. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, so the chat is working. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what we did in the previous streams. So this guy, Wilbert, as some of you guys called it, um, is basically just a, started as a sketch. I actually found one of the originals. Let me show you. So this is one of the initial ideas for this guy. Uh, it was kind of like a Keiju creature like a massive creature type of thing, uh, but then we deviated towards more something like this. Um, after the last week's stream, I went ahead and I actually changed a few things or added a few things. So I'm going to show you. So this is one of the kind of like the shoulder plate that we did. But then I went ahead and tweaked it a little bit. I just added this this line and got rid of that sort of segmentation uh, just to break up the silhouette a little bit more and you know make it more asymmetrical or more obvious the asymmetry and I also went ahead and added this quick cylinder all around here and added some you know the indication of the of the arms because prior to this we only had kind of like a, a sphere at the bottom uh, but that's about it so that's all I added and the rest is part of the of the previous stream all right i think that we got the the chat working awesome hey alex yoani cool um harry Mat mandelness um man man mandibles mandibles <laughs> here Harry mandibles um is your serious course still open it is not open uh the thing is with the with my course i can only open it a few times a year but um if you're part of the of the list. So if you go to 3dconceptartist.com, that's the um, where you can find the course called the Extra Mile. And it's currently the only page that you will see there. It is currently closed, as I said, but if you go down to the bottom, you'll see um, kind of like a form so that you can put your email. And once I open it, I will let you know by email. Um, I might be able to run, I might be able to open it for a, like a very short period of time, like a, a few days uh, towards this, like the end of the year in December. Uh, we'll see. So if you are part of that list, I will send a, a very quick email to you um, letting you know that it's open. And maybe if you can, um, you can opt in to, to get in before the end of the year. But uh, as it is right now, it is currently open. Yeah, so yeah, 
cool. As long as you're in part of the list, you will be able to uh, you get an email. Um, awesome. Alrighty. So yeah. So again, this is what we did. Um, I'm gonna try to. I, I want to continue with this guy. I wanna keep refining it and add a few details and like I said I want kind of some some kind of strap or something like that uh, I actually did some tests with a stylized fiber mesh to make kind of this more like a Viking type of look <laughs> for this guy uh, and this is just fiber mesh with a with a custom sort of set of a custom setting um, but you know I'll, I'll walk you through this one if we decided to add it um, but I, I'm going to try to show you some of the the new tools of Zeroch 2020 um, in with practical examples using this guy. So hopefully, so hopefully it's gonna it's gonna work. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which areas and what would be the best way to show you those those settings or those um, features. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, two of my favorites, which are the cam view and the thumbnail view. And if I enable them here, I have them already in my in my UI. Um, I went through the process as I was testing ZBrush to uh, slowly update and, and get rid of some things in my UI that didn't work or that I wasn't using as much and replace them with these awesome things. So these two are some of my favorite um, tools, some of my new favorite tools, uh, because for, for one, like the, I don't know if you can see it. Let me just turn off the chat for a second. So this one here on the left hand side is the thumbnail and I can just control the size of it. But it's just a fantastic addition to be able, especially for concept addies and character addies, to be able to continuously judge the shape and the silhouette of the and the proportions of the character. So you see, it's an interactive thing. So as I rotate, um, can you? I'm just gonna turn it off while the time, uh, while I show this one. So as I rotate, the silhouette updates, so I can judge like you know the silhouette and if see the proport if the proportions are working that sort of thing and by using this thumbnail that's how i like decided to take the the shoulder blade and maybe create this kind of like spike here so that it it breaks up the silhouette a little bit more and, and makes it a bit more interesting and again breaks up the the silhouette the the symmetry or it makes it more obvious that it's asymmetrical um so that's just one of my favorite tools and i used it a lot for the um, for the images that I created for the beta testing. By the way, if you want kind of like a more in-depth guide, I'm just going to go ahead and show you this. So if you go to the ZBrush guides, uh, this is the latest guide that I posted, the intro to, to, to ZBrush 2020. Uh, you can go ahead and, you know, it's, it's basically my experience with the with testing the new features and I give you a few uh, tips and tricks and you know very short version of a tutorial on how the, the different tools work so let's say if you want to have a look at polypane just click on this send you to the, the polypane adjust by color and I use some of the examples that I that I created during the beta testing just to give you an idea there's a few videos etc um, yeah so if you want to have a more detailed you know explanation of what the, the, the new features are uh, you're welcome to visit the Zeroes Guides website, and it should be in there. Uh, but I'm, again, I'm going to try to show you a practical example of those. Now, what's uh, what's cool about this thumbnail, and I'm going to show you a couple of you know tricks, is that not only is interactive, but you can also change the color. So by default, if you go to the preference palette, I'm going to check that on the right hand side. Uh, you should have this cam view, cam view, and thumbnail. So if I expand the thumbnail, um, I set the background to to a black color and if you do that Siri is gonna interpret that color as transparent so that's why I can just sort of put my character behind it um, and and that is really helpful if you want to leverage the kind of like the the transparency of that and and gain more of the real state of the screen in a way so if I change this to white so I'm just gonna click on this background and select white this is kind of like the default setting of the of the thumbnail which is pretty awesome as well but if you move the character like this or to this area for example then you're you're hiding part of it because it just sits on top so I prefer to just set the background to black and you see is gonna automatically give you the inverse color or the complementary color so if I select something like a blue color it's gonna give me a yellow silhouette right and so on and so forth so if I select a magenta it's gonna give me a green one 
that's that's how it works um i'm not sure if this is going to be the most uh, or this is the the most useful colors but i prefer i just wanted to show you that i prefer the, the black one so it's easier to to read the silhouette and especially because i have a usually a dark background to work with uh, so this is pretty pretty useful and then you have the the size which i have mapped to my ui so i can just move it around if i if i want to see more more details or reduce it if i don't want to and um, you also have this magnify the difference between the size and the magnify is literally the size is just the maximum size will be 512 uh, but if the, you magnify it it's just going to distort or pixelate the image but it's, you can still do it so this is a, a pretty cool thing to just play around with but you see it just pixelates stuff and that's about it and you can also export the thumbnail so um, again super useful stuff it might not look like the like a super like a revelation <laughs> but it's a really good tool it's a really really handy tool um, and yeah that's it so you can turn silhouette on thumbnail so from the thumbnail if I turn it on if I turn off silhouette it's just gonna change the silhouette to basically take a screenshot of this which is also pretty pretty good now I prefer not to use this one or haven't found uh, a great use for this one especially because you can create your own cu custom cam views so I'm gonna leave it as silhouette and then let's move on to the cam view actually let me just see if you have any questions about that um, Pablo super noob question that I can figure out is there a way to add a vertex add a vertex to an edge instead of splitting the face and working with stitching um, no, as in to create an end gun, there's no, there's no way that I can think of. I mean, you can split. The thing is, if you create, if you have a, a just a single square and you create a point somehow in between an edge, Sirius is gonna create geometry between it. It's not gonna, um, it's not gonna be an end gun of five points. That's not gonna happen in Sirius. Hey Khalil, does the V key still do the silhouette? Um, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know because um, the V key, I have that mapped to the to the visibility. So V for visibility, just turn, as you can see here at the top, it turns on and off the double. Uh, so I've never used the V for silhouette. So no, I don't know. I have a I have a macro, or I had a macro. I got rid of it. I wasn't using it that much. I had a macro that you can press, and it will just turn the. Basically, I had a macro that take the background, set it to white, select um selected a skin material like that, or a, actually it was a flat color like this one, and set it to a black, and that would give me a quick silhouette. It was just a macro, but I got rid of it, and I have it. I mean, I have things around here, so it's uh, yeah, it's. it's easy to access them anyway so the cam view is absolutely fantastic as well so i think the original intention was to be able to see the way that or the yeah the way that your your character or your sculpture whatever you're doing is facing and so you know which way uh for example if you're uh, working with symmetry and or you want to just orient the model somehow to export to a different application um that was kind of like the intention however i haven't found i mean to be completely honest with you i turn on the floor and i look at these arrows and that is enough for me right and i'm used to doing that and also um generally speaking when i start a character for example which is what i do most of the time i have floor on and i know my symmetry axis and once i start i know i mean the face is facing me forward and it's pretty obvious for me to to know which which side the character is facing but the cam view which is meant to be a very helpful tool for that um, what I found really interesting is that you can customize it the way that you want it as in create whatever cam view you can you want with whatever character you have or, or sculpture and it becomes almost like the same as having the thumbnail in a silhouette uh, without the silhouette mode like this um, but what's really cool about it so let me just turn that on is that you can customize it so i have uh, instead of having references of front back center top and all that i just have a bunch of custom cams that i created for anat anatomical references so i have this head permanently on um so i can rotate and it would rotate with it so it's interactive 
so I can see it from different angles. And this is really helpful to just, um, especially if you're learning anatomy, um, I'm not saying that I'm like, that I know a lot of anatomy, but as I study, and I, it's something that I keep studying every now and again, is it's, it's good to have a good view or a good, a good reference when you're working, regardless of how well and you know anatomy. Because sometimes what the, the visual library that you have in your head uh, it might it might play tricks on you because you think is oh yeah I know how this looks in uh, I've I've studied I know how it looks but actually having a, a visual reference it might help you so that's something that I found really useful especially because you can see it from different angles just by rotating your model uh, and you can I'll show you the one the other ones that I have so I have a, a skeleton so that helps me with proportions I have uh, you know a more realistic skull again just to to help out with the with the structure of the face and I have a full anatomical kind of character um, and I saved these ones with a particular with a custom material that you guys can find on the Zero Guides website as well it's called the I think super comic material and I have it here on my UI as well so this is what it does it just flattens everything it's just a black and white image but it has a pretty well defined outline and a series of cavities or a setting for the cavity of the material. So you get a, a comic style look, right? So I did this with the, with the models, selected the material, um, set the background to black so that Zeroge will recognize again black as transparent and uh, simply just cl cl click on create a new cam and that's what, I, what it gave me, right? So if I wanted this guy as a, as a reference, for example, all I have to do is select the color that I want, um, you know, the material that I want, it doesn't doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna grab whatever is on the canvas and it's gonna create a cam view, right? So let's say it white and on the cam view sub palette or this section, I wanna click make cam view and so we're just gonna take uh, a shot every, I think it's every 45 degrees in eight different elevations and and basically give you a new thumbnail. So now, I have Wilbur here on the on the right hand side and I can just take a look at it in different you know in different views I can go back to my material and I have a, a pretty decent representation of of the character here or well, an exact representation and it's very useful to to see all right which areas um, have a lot of details which areas are kind of like areas of rest and that sort of thing so it's absolutely fantastic now if I move to the next cam which you can do with this button here um, you click on that and it will just reset it so if you don't save your current or the camera that you created like the one with this character as soon as you start cycling through the safe ones it's just going to disappear but the great thing about it is that you can go to texture and Zbrush would have created this it's like a yeah an image that has all the views of that character so you can go ahead and export that save that into the the cam view folder within the installation folder and that's how I save these ones so if you save it in that folder it will become one of the default ones I don't have the the ones that come with Zbrush because I, I honestly got rid of them like I said um, those ones were meant to be or I thought they were meant to be to to give you an indication of where um, yeah where your model is located but I found this interesting or a much more useful way to, to use <laughs> a much more useful way to use the cameras uh, using that that this type of custom thing so let's see if there's questions about that um, Alex uh, what can I so what tablet do I use I use a Cintiq 24 uh, Cintiq touch 24 a Cintiq Pro touch 24 I don't know exactly how those words are in the sentence, but uh, there's something like that. <laughs> the Cintiq 24 inch uh, Touch Pro. <laughs> you can search for it like that. Um, but I also use I also use a, a, an Intus Pro as well when I'm not in this setup mode. Um, I have the Ergotron so I can move my my tablet around. Um, Alex, I, I think you're not wrong. Like in the original button for V is just to switch between colors. So V uh, in the in the default UI, if you press V on your keyboard, it's just gonna switch between um, the main color and the secondary color of your swatches. So if by default you have in your secondary you have black, and you press V, it's gonna give you that silhouette view. So it's not necessarily giving you a silhouette view; it's just switching colors. If you have a blue color in in here or a green yellow color, it's gonna switch to that one. So maybe that clarifies things a little bit. Anyway, so that's the cam view and and the and the thumbnail. They're fantastic tools 
for uh, for character artists especially I think uh, but anyone really will find it really useful all right so let's go ahead and move on to a more exciting tool like the um, I'm gonna show you two things I'm gonna show you like two in one I'm gonna show you the morph UVs which is fantastic it's one of the best tools and my my favorite brushes which are the extractor brushes so as you can see I have them here and the history brush the history brush um, I'm putting forward a request to call it the total recall brush it's absolutely fantastic um, this I'm gonna call it total recall I don't know <laughs> if I'm in trouble but um, the total recall brush is is like having a morph target all within the um, it's like a permanently having it's permanently having a morph target that you don't have to set. You just come back and, and forth. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick about that one. Um, we, we we have plenty of time. So let's go ahead and do something because I'm just been moving the camera. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select this sub tool, go into solo mode. And in order to use those tools, uh, the the morph target especially, we have to have UVs and and the extractor brush. You don't have to have anything, but um, I want to have UV so that I can show you both kind of like in combination. So I'm going to turn on polyframe. This is currently a dynamesh. So what I'll do is I'm going to do a quick zero mesh at half. Shouldn't take long. It's a pretty simple piece. But in the meantime, if there is uh, questions, I'm happy to, to answer those. I mean, uh, I was planning to show you a few things uh, that I found really helpful with the Zeros 2020, like awesome features. But if you have something in particular or something specific that you want me to to show you, um, I'm also happy to do that. All right. Right, so this is a little bit... It's a bit dense. Mm. All right. So what I'll do is I'm gonna help the give the give the Siri measure a little bit of a help and and try to define where I want this, uh, what the cuts I want the cuts to be. So what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate or clone my standard brush. I'm gonna turn off C add. I'm gonna enable RGB, and I'm gonna use the black color or a black color. And this is a, a really helpful technique as well. Right now, I need more subdivision. So let me just undo that. Okay. Oh, this is another great thing. Now the autosave allows you to stop the autosave by just pressing escape. Oh, I think I have a texture on. There we go. You know what, I'm just gonna use a my custom brush. It's gonna be faster. So this is just a custom standard brush that has a focal shift, very, like very sharp focal shift. And the strength of RGB is all the way to 100. And I think I also have trails, so it just makes for a very sharp and I don't like a sharpie. So what I'm doing here is just trying to define where I want a cut in the polygroups to be. And then I'm gonna use the polygroup it, which is something that was introduced in 2018, I think. I can't remember. And this is going to give us a, a very clean set of polygroups that then we can tell Zbrush using the, the Siri measure we can tell, hey, we want to actually remesh um, based on the polygroups, so it will preserve certain edges. And that is roughly what I want to do. All right. So all I did was just um, define this with polypaint, nothing else. And uh, this is going to allow me to create very sharp polygroups, like I said, and then do a serial measure. So I can turn on polyframe. I'm going to turn off the line so that you guys can see it a bit easier. Also change to a different material. And I'm going to use this mask by polypaint, uh, which you guys should have on the 
zip login, polygroup it. Uh, it's one of these ones. Mass white polygroup by pane. Hang on. Is this the right one? I think I. Give me one second. Mass by poly paint. No. Hang on. <laughs> the thing is, because I changed my UI, I I used to have it right here at the bottom. Now I forgot where it is. Anyway, it's one of these ones. I have to put it back in because I use this quite a bit. So um, I'm going to click on polygroup from paint borderless. So if I click this one, hopefully it's the one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I used to have that button here. <laughs> I have to re replace it again. Uh, so ZBrush is going to take the... Um, this is an old feature, by the way, but... Um, just in case you haven't used it, it's, it's phenomenal. So it's gonna take the, it's gonna average the the thickness of that line that I created. It's gonna average and it's gonna cut through that uh, through the middle of that line. So it's gonna give you a very nice. Uh, right now it's a it's a bit uh, pixelated in a way, or you know the border is not very clean. But I'll show you how to clean that in a second. Uh, but it's basically gonna give you that, and you now have if I turn polyframe, sorry, uh, poly paint off. Now you have a, a very nice set of polygroups that you can utilize with the Siri measure. So this is a technique that is absolutely fantastic. I I go in way more depth in the course. This is how I, in the in the course that I teach the extra mile, this is how one of the approaches that I teach in terms of retopology. Um, but just a, as a quick overview, that's what you do. Uh, you can also go to polish by groups for you guys should be on the deformation palette. And polishing by group is basically going to polish the difference between the groups. So it did a did an okay job. You can keep doing it to keep softening it, softening the edges. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be super smooth. Uh, when we do the retopology, series is gonna smooth this out even more. Uh, but that's it, right? So we have now a set of different polygroups. This could have been done a little bit better, but it'll do for this sketch. So now that we have these different polygroups, we can go to Siri Mesha. Uh, geometry, zero mesh, right? Uh, we're gonna keep. Uh, we can turn off adapt, since it's, it's, there's nothing very complicated of this shape, so it's not gonna make a huge difference. Uh, I wanna keep the half on so that it creates less polygons, obviously. And the one that I wanna turn on would be. I have the the keep groups and detect edges in my UI, but let's just do it from here so you guys know. So keep groups. I want to keep groups, so that that means Siri is going to try to remesh, maintaining the difference between the groups. Um, the smoothing of the group at this point, we don't really need it, so we can just leave it at zero. Uh, the, what this slider is going to do is basically what I just did manually. So polish by groups is before it runs the the remesher, it's going to polish all the groups and the borders to create a cleaner cut. Uh, but we have done that already. Um, this is really useful if you're using kind of like a if you're trying to remesh from a dynamesh object something that is not as clean so with that in mind keeping groups half let's see remesh that and wait for that and see what that gives us alex what do you think of the most uh groundbreak what what do you think is the most groundbreaking ad, uh, advance in 2020 and how does it add to the common dynamesh remesh project workflow um it's hard to tell like depending on on the I think all of the the new tools are all of them are in are basically to in, enhance your current workflow. So all of them are just new tools that you can go and put into your current workflow and just speed it up, right? Um, so depending depending on what workflow you're using or depending on which which pipeline, yeah, which workflow you have, because everyone has slightly different workflows, then different different tools or different processes are going to be more useful to you. Uh, like I said, the way that I'm using the 3D cam view and the thumbnail might not be the same way that you use it, but I found it like really helpful in that way. Um, having said that, I would say the new extractor brushes is, uh, is a massive improvement in terms of uh, being able to create brushes on the go. And I will show you that in a second. Um, but I, I think the history brush and the UV map of, or morph UV being able to sculpt in the UE is like the most groundbreaking thing of this um, of this update, and I've been using it a lot. 
but again i don't know how would that work in terms of the dynamics remesh project work or project workflow um there's no there's not necessarily something that is dedicated for that um it's it's all part of the like a big the, the, the update it's just considering a lot of a lot of uh, processes not just one that's what i'm trying to say okay so this did a, a pretty good job with the remeshing you'll see it try to keep the or oh, it added a loop around the borders and that's just because we kept the groups um we can go ahead and actually smooth by groups again even more so that now that we have a cleaner topology and less polygons this is going to create a, a nicer set of groups um let's go ahead and do another one so i'm just going to keep remeshing this until we get something really good uh, this is also a very nice process when you have uh, let's say a, a sketchy hard surface so if you take a if you use a, a dynamic glo a dynamic ball and and simply just cut and clip and add a, something that looks very hard surface you use this technique and keeping the borders and sorry keeping the grooves and also detecting edges is going to give you a really nice result i'm just going to keep doing this a bit do another re remesh In theory, every remesh that you do after you do after you do one, every remesh that you do on top of that should be faster because it's just simplifying the geometry. That's the theory. So as long we have as long as we have the the polygroups, we'll be okay. I think we're getting closer. All right, I think this is pretty good. I'll do one more and see if it improves some of the, yeah, perfect. All right, so that's good. Um, I can go ahead and I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup using the trim dynamic at this low resolution, just to flatten some of these polygons, especially in this polygroup. And maybe use the move brush. Okay, so this is just pure refinement of of the main shape. But we already have some pretty decent polygroups that we can take advantage of. All right, so now the next thing that I wanna do is create some quick UVs for this piece so that I can show you uh, the morph UVs and then we can get into the extractor brushes. Um, I don't think we're gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're not gonna make a lot of progress in terms of the of the character. It's gonna be more about like showing off the, the features. So um, I actually wanna keep the border as part of this main piece. So what I'll do is hide this one, invert, and then I'm just gonna give this a simple a simple group like so. And now that I have that, I can go ahead and open up my C plugin. Log that to the right. And we can go to the UV master. And in the UV master we can leave symmetry on, see what that gives us, and turn on polygroups. And by turning polygroups, see we're just gonna detect how many polygroups we have and essentially it's going to use each polygroup as its own uv island so it's going to cut through the difference of the polygroups so i'm going to unwrap that and that's it now we have uv map or a uv yeah we have uvs for this piece and now what we can do is let's change the material turn off polyframe Whoops, all that um, what we can do is subdivide this. So I'm gonna divide one, two, three, maybe five times. I'm gonna bring in the dumps and the brush just to test. We might need a bit, a bit more geometry. So we have about 500, 5,000, 50,000, 550,000. So that's that's enough resolution to to do some some detailing. Okay. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and turn on polyframe again 
just so that you can see the difference. And I'm going to go to the uh, Morph UV. So I have it already in my UI, and it's really, really good. But for you guys, it's just a matter of going to the to the UV map section here. And uh, this is a feature that has been in ZBrush for a while now. Uh, the difference or the new the new feature of this 2020 is that now you can paint as well as sculpt directly in this uh, 3D on fall version of the UVs. So if I click on this, this is what I get. Right, so as you can see, um, there's a tiny little bit of uh, elevation. Uh, let's see if you, if I can do something for you guys to see it. Just trying to find an angle. There's a tiny bit of elevation around the border, and that is essentially that border that we that we had in the in the sculpt. Uh, but this is fantastic because we can go ahead and start sculpting in here. So I can take my damn standard brush, and I can do, I don't know, I can do something like this. Well, I'm not going to go through the border because in this case, I'll have um, another shell in there. But I can do, let's say, I can do this like very easily and very quickly. I mean, this is not going to look any good. I just want to show you what it does. Um, turn back on the Morph UV. And now we have that effect all around the edge, right? So that's super, super helpful. We can actually use that to create something, um, you know, that looks pretty good. <laughs> um, this one is inverted, so you have to keep an eye on when it's unfolding, just to keep an eye on how, um, whether you're pushing or pulling the geometry. Um, what's great about it is you can just undo, and it's also going to undo the view. So if I undo, it's going to send me back to this Morph UV, undo, and now I can just go to the proper view, or to the proper side. And let's just go ahead and we can turn on the lazy radius so that we have more control of the line and do this sort of thing. So with a little bit more of control. Right? More of UV. Now we have this. So this is what I mean that is absolutely fantastic. Right. Of course, we can do some some planning. For example, uh, let's say this is a little bit thin here, and I actually want to have a bit more of that border. So I'm gonna undo all this, right? And we can do some like very simple planning. And what I mean by planning is just that we can mark some of the let's mark the thickness, right? So I wanna have something there. Let's turn off lazy radius. I want the thickness to be around there. In this area, maybe here. Here, at the top is very important. So it's just like I mean, you can totally do it in the same way that I've been doing it. This is probably not the easiest way to visualize this feature, but I just doing I'm doing some markings so that I can then follow those in a, a more simplified view of this mesh. Right. Going to the morph UV. Let's see if this works. Forgot to turn lazy mouse. Let's do it again. Yeah, I'm not the best at following this. <laughs> All right. So now we have a much, you know, um, obviously we have those those markings here. So in this case, it would have been better to, <laughs> to just do it with sort of just poly paint rather than actually sculpting because we have this doubling up. Um, but, you know, <laughs> let me just do it again then. But it's a really, really useful feature.
again, this is probably not the the best way to use it, um, or not the the easiest way to visualize the 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 power of this of this feature. But um, hopefully, I'll show you. Oh, maybe with this one, I'll show you something else. Let's go to the UV morph or morph UV. Oops, let me see. Is it this way? I forgot. Oh, the other way. This way. All right. So this is why sometimes it's actually good to have the camera so that you see where um, where this is pointing towards. All right. So let's say that I have these markings here in, in with PolyPaint, and I can just connect them using whatever brush you have. Um, but let's say I I did it with this color just because this is the one that I had selected. Um, but you want to actually see more of the sculpting details. So I have this fade opacity here that actually fades the opacity of the poly paint and the texture. And this is a massive improvement in the in the poly painting area. Uh, you can find this slider in the render palette here. And this is the fade opacity and the fade color is the color that is going to fade to. So if you change this to whatever color or you know, I have it at, um, as white. I don't change this, to be honest. But if I fade to this uh, bluish color, it's going to fade to that color. So that's why it doesn't make much sense to me to have it other than white. So I'm going to fade this so that I can see more of this. And let's go ahead and do this again. All right, so now we can go ahead and let's just fill everything with white. Go back to the Morph UV and we can just refine this a little bit. But essentially that's what, that's one of the advantages of having this um, UV or this Morph UV, right? Um, you can also, let's say I want to have, I don't know, with the clay brush, of RGB. I want to push this in, right, so that you can see a little bit more of this as a as an as a piece that is sticking out. Uh, and I will probably do this with the the C modeler, really. Um, but just to show you the again, this is not the the end result. Uh, but you could go to the morph UV again from this side, and I can just go ahead and sculpt in this in this fashion or in what's better actually let's go ahead and mask this so we have a lot of control i'm gonna do a quick mask so making this mask in the 3d view or in the 3d version of this model um it's totally possible it's just that with this mode, you have way more control and it's just definitely faster. Right? So I'm just going to go ahead and sharpen this a little bit. Sharpen this. Right? Invert that mask. Uh, actually, let's blur it a little bit. Right? And we can bring in something like the clay brush that we had or even the the edge polish so that we can flatten this maybe too much smooth this area so I'm just essentially flattening this these lines And I'm going to bring the smooth stronger just to smooth out these borders, maybe invert the mask a little bit. Go back and we have something, I mean, we still have to refine this quite a bit, but now we have um, sort of these borders sticking out a little bit more, which is what I wanted. Again, this is something that it would be probably easier if you just take the C modeler and 
extrude these faces from the lowest subdivision level. So from here, you can extrude that. And that's probably what I'm going to do for the for the actual character, but just to show you how good this is. Now, another really cool stuff that you can do is when you have separate UV islands, um, and I'll, I'm just seeing a lot of activity in the chat. I'll get to those comments and questions in just a second. Um, something that you can do that is actually really, really helpful is, let's go back to the same idea of marking or doing a poly paint marking. I'm gonna do it with a green color. Uh, I'm just going to enable polyframe. And I just wanna create a couple of lines here. Maybe the smaller they are, the more accurate this is going to be. So one there and another one here. Okay, so turn this off. So I have these two lines with green that I marked there. And the reason I did that is because one is overlapping over the one polygroup and the other part of the line is overlapping on the other one. So now I can go back to the morph UV. Look at this from the front view is this one, I think. Right, and I can take uh, again the damp standard brush, and I can go from this point. Hopefully, you can see it from this green reference point to the other one. Is going like this across, and I am also painting with green, but I can get rid of that, and then I have the same the same effect here. So I know in which way these, these UV shells are facing. It's not gonna be super accurate, but it's gonna be good enough, okay? So now let's go back from Morph UV, and we have that line connecting those polyframes, or poly paint, so poly UV shells. <laughs> and then you can just refine this if you want. And that's pretty much it. Right? So really, really handy stuff. This is definitely one of the best features. And the fact that you can paint with color and also, or, well, paint and also sculpt is just fantastic. Another really cool thing that you can do is actually use alphas. So if I go back to Morph UV, um, for instance, you can go ahead and let's just go to the standard um, with maybe RGB as well. And I, I'll show you another another tool that is fantastic. I'm going to select a, I'm going to change the stroke to drag rect and I'm going to select an alpha uh, that's going to be very obvious to see. Let's say this alpha 34, right? Now, if I use this, I'm going to turn this off so you can see the difference. Well, actually it will do the same thing. Um, I'm going to use a different color. This A is for paint with alpha. So Zebra is gonna restrict the color information, whatever you paint, to the alpha. And this is like, it's brilliant. So I'm gonna click and drag. So you'll see I'm only painting this area with the alpha color, plus adding some volume, right? Um, so in this, in this instance, having this type of uh, fit, oh, this type of details that are kind of like circular is going to be very, very useful to do it within the um, Morph UV because if you probably do it from a different angle, so we're just going to just project that alpha based on the camera. So all of these details are going to be very well distributed in the in the three D view. Some of them might get distorted. But that's, that's, again, just something to do with the unwrapping. All right, let's say something like that. Uh, let's turn off or go back to the Morph UV. And we have this very, very nice set of details. Let's go ahead and turn off Polyframe now. Oh, Polypaint, sorry. And we have a nice set of details that we did in the, in the UV, right? So this is one of the ways that this UV tool can be used and and it's just really really handy it's going to speed up the workflow a lot especially if you have a very complex set of uh clothes and i think solomon uh solomon blair from pixelogic he does a really nice demonstration of how to how to do this in a more practical sense especially this line that i created here with a jacket um so when you have something like in in the armpit where you cannot access 
like very easily those seams with the UV. You can just follow it in a in a straight line almost, and it's just gonna be fantastic. All right, let me see these quite um, questions. Um, Uh, Julius R. Uh, must have unwrapped lowest. Hang on, hang on. Um, most you have unwrapped at lowest subdivision level, uh, Mark. So you can, you can. Um, I'm not sure if you mean the using the UV or unwrapping with the UV master. If you wanna um, create UVs, you have to do it in the lowest subdivision level. If you use the UV master and you use the clone, um, Sirius automatically is gonna, you know take your your mesh and set it to the lowest subdivision level and then you can use whatever tools you want um, with the morph uv you don't have to be in the lowest subdivision you can be at any point um, I, I believe so so then you can be at any point and morph and then tweak it yeah so you can be at any point um, the only thing is that you cannot go back and forth in subdivisions at this morph uv or the, when the when you have the the mesh morphed you cannot go back and forth so if you want to work on higher subdivision level you have to go back push it to six and then morph again and then work in the highest subdivision or vice versa um, because the thing that you have to keep in mind is that what Sirius is doing with this morph uv is not um uh, it's not it's not it's not a 2d version right it's not a, a 2d it's not for example what you would see in substance painter uh, i'm just thinking of a, uh, another example uh, where in substance painter you see the 3d view and the 2d version of it uh, next to each other this is not what sirish is doing sirish is actually taking the 3d model and he's flattening it which is crazy so he's making it flat but it's still a 3d model it's just that it's flat <laughs> so it's not a 2d version so that's why you can apply you know textures color um you know depth information and so on Uh, let's see. Hey, Jules Art. Um, congrats. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, we, we reached 30, 30k followers on Instagram. That's pretty cool. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Um, would be nice to see the morph on a second viewport instead of clicking morph UV every time. Um, yeah, that's the that's the catch there because it's not like a, like I just said, it's not a 2D image. Right, it's, it's an actual 3D model. Uh, you can have, you can split view and have two of the same if you want to, but it's not gonna be, yeah, it's not gonna be as helpful because the split view is not gonna give you two versions like a morph and a morph view. Um, how do you know what side sculpt on and not to in the in the inside portion? So, well, first of all, you can do it by looking at the at the camera. So if I unwrap more UV, this section that is raising up is kind of like pointing towards me. So the ca the face that I have as my cam view is pointing towards me. So I know that this is sticking out. If I rotate around, it's gonna show you the back of it. So I know this is the back of the polygons. Um, but the easiest thing, I mean, this is a very easy to very easy way to see that. But the easiest way to think about this is just do something <laughs> just do a do a detail and then on morph and see if that is the correct view or not I, I think that's just the easiest way for me um before i go ahead and, and do anything but yeah with the cam view you will be able to tell whatever is facing towards you that's the that's where the normals of the flat 3d view are pointing um when the morph uv is unwrapped yep that's uh, that's what i just said i think Juan Martin, yes, but you can copy those UVs into a subdivided model if the base is the same as the lowest subdivision wrapped, I believe. Hmm. Yep, maybe. I'm not sure in what this in what this is in regards to or what this is regard what? Oh campaign guidelines and mesh. Okay. Yeah, so these are I'm just trying to catch up with the with the comments here. Real time, um, real time analysis or draft analysis. Yep. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to that as well. I'm going to show you how I use that. 
Uh, can you put polypane in the thumbnail? In the thumbnail? Uh, yeah, you can put polypane on the... I know, oh, sorry. In the thumbnail here? Uh, you can, you can if you change from, yes, you can, um, let me show you, thumbnail, if you turn on the silhouette, you can, because it's basically grabbing whatever you have in the canvas, right, so if you, if you have polypane, it's just going to show you exactly what you have in there, I don't know if that's your question, hopefully that is, all right, so let's go ahead and do some, detailing actually let's do some detailing on this on this thing i'm gonna i'm gonna show you a couple of other techniques that are fantastic so let's say that this is rubbish <laughs> which, which is this this is rubbish i don't like this at all um I, I have no problem because i have the history or the total total recall brush so i can come back and go back in time basically to whatever point i was so i'm gonna show you how cool the history brush is so I, I have, as long as you have undo history, these dots here at the top, you are totally fine to go back and basically go back to any point of your mesh. So um, I'm going to select my history recall brush or total recall brush. I'm going to go back in time to, let's say, this point where we had a clean mesh, for example, right? Um, or let's make it more obvious. Let's go to this point where we had the lines. Or maybe before that, where we had some other lines. Yeah. So let's say that I want to go back to this point, right? But I want to keep moving forward. So I'm going to hold the control key and click on this point. And you'll see that little, oops. You'll see that little white dot or white line that indicates that uh, we just stored this current state of the model. So right now, Sirius is like looking at this and say, okay, I'm going to store this in the history recall brush or whatever that is. Uh, go back to where we had all the details. So back uh, forward in time. And you'll see this white uh, dot still indicates that area. And then with the history recall brush, we just need to do this. And that's it. How awesome is that? Just recover whatever you want. And that's what I said. It's kind of like having a, a morph target. But without the need of actually, you know, saving it. Plus, it's like having a morph target, but also a, uh, what's the name? Morph target. And yeah, and the morph brush together. So this line that I have here, I can just get rid of that because I'm not happy with that. So this is one of the most amazing features, I think, from this uh, this version. Like I I use this, I I found myself using this way more than I thought I would. I, at the beginning, I thought it's oh yeah, it's just you know uh, a gimmicky thing that you can use. Um, but then I started using it, it's like okay, this is the best. This is the best the best option. So the morph, uh, I still use the morph target. But this is just another layer of complexity, or, or not complexity, another layer of control that you would have. Uh, just keep in mind that whatever you're doing with this brush is ultimately a projection. So it has to be from the camera. So I basically went back in time. Now, you might think this, this is ridiculous <laughs> that I'm using all of these. See, this is what I mean. It has to be... Oops. It has to be projected from the camera. So be careful with the with the borders. Um, yeah, so basically what I did was just went back on time. So I actually could have just go back to this point and keep working from that point onwards and it will it would have delete the, the history. So it's more useful if you just want to go back to a specific point in time. So let's go ahead and do something a little bit more interesting for this for this guy. It's gonna give this some some thickness very quick I'm gonna do very uh, you know a very sketchy thing and I'm gonna show you the extractor brushes as well as the a more practical example of the history recall because again they're really awesome so I'm just gonna give this a slightly 
thicker border. Um, it's going to be very sketchy, but we're going to use the white polish to get something a bit more stylized and interesting. Doesn't look as sketchy. Right. Um, let me show you uh, an actual good example of how to fix things with the with the history recall brush. All right. Let's say that um, again. This is very sketchy, but uh, before I do anything, I made a mistake here, and you see this stroke in here. I can go ahead and just smooth that out, for example. Uh, but if I want to go back exactly to that point, I can just go back in time to this, store one here, move forward, and I have all the other details that I added after, right? And with the history recall brush, I just paint in this area or, you know, apply the effect in that area. And I kept all the other details that I did. Let's do a clay polish. Another clay polish. And I'm just going to refine these, these lines. Okay, this is super sketchy. I'm going to exaggerate all of this with the trim dynamic. And I'm just going to add some, some wear and tear and some, some damages to this plate using the extractor brushes. So you'll see how cool this is. This is like super sketchy again, but I'm trying to stylize it with this trim dynamic. Sharpening those borders. All right. Again, it's not the, the best of it, uh, the best piece really. But again, it's just to, to show you another thing. Um, all right, so let's go. Let's get into the extractor brushes, and hopefully that will be a, a good a good example of a, a more practical use for the history brush. Um, brock brock core. Buenas días, tío. Let's put it. Um, yeah. So that is the idea for at least for the next year. Um, I'm I'm trying to set up a few things and then start a a stream in Spanish as well. Can you put polyp in the thumbnail? Yeah, I think I said that. No worries, Jonathan. Awesome. All right. So let's say that I want to start detailing this, adding some scratches and so on and so forth. So I'm going to um, take maybe the, the standard brush. No, the damn standard brush. And I'm going to make a, maybe around here. I'm going to make some co some kind of indentation. And I'm going to use the mask to mask one side of this scratch, bring in the trim dynamic. And I'm going to push this in. That's too much. So invert that mask and do the same thing on the other side. And we can go ahead and smooth this a little bit and then go back with the damp standard brush and refine it. Right, so it's kind of like just a simple scratch. Oops. Everything is frozen now. Ah, oh, brilliant. Ah, this is this is very annoying. So my tablet is just crashed again. So let me go back and reset the drivers. This is really annoying. It was working absolutely fine for almost an hour. I think once we hit the the hour mark, 
um, where is it? Wacom. Hmm. Okay, this is weird. Ah, here we go. Reset. Um. Yeah, thanks. Pixel Desire 3D. I know. Uh, it was just the the Wacom drivers have some com compatibility issues with whatever whatever software I'm using. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but it was pretty 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 good for about an hour. Hopefully. Okay. Brilliant. Now we have no pressure. Um. Going back. Nope. All right, we have no pressure, which is great. <laughs> All right, give me one second. I'll be back and try to fix this. Uh, it's really annoying. I'll be back. All right, so <laughs> didn't work what I was trying to do. Uh, you know what? These things happen. What can you do? So yeah, I don't have any any pressure, but let's just let's just work with a with a mouse. Some of you guys might have mouses <laughs> still. Some some mice. Um, all right, I'm going to try to work with opacity. I guess this is going to be interesting. Uh, the the good thing is that the extractor brushes uh, might not be too important to use the the pressure. Um, I'll show you why in a second. So with Trim Dynamic, I'm gonna reduce the intensity quite a bit. So this is what I mean by opacity. Yeah, it's a it's a hundred percent Wacom. It's a Wacom driver issue because now the the right mouse the right the right click which bring my this little pop up the quick pop up it doesn't allow me to rotate around so it's yeah it's some something to do with that okay i'm going to um, take the pinch oops again with less intensity i'm just going to refine these borders this is not going to be great without the, the opacity but hopefully you guys can see the the features I could just restart bro uh restart ZBrush, I guess. We'll give it a go. Um you know what? Let me just do that. I'm gonna do a quick save. Um I'll give me two more seconds, I'll restart ZBrush and that should fix the problem, hopefully. One second.
All right, we're back in business. So yeah, I had to restart. Apparently when this happens, you have to restart the drivers as well as zeros. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> ah, this is great. All right. So let's um let's just refine this scratch. So all of these just to make a simple scratch. Uh, we could potentially subdivide this a couple more times. Two million is fine and just refine this slightly. Right, this is going to be a very simple, very simple detail. And with the trim dynamic again, just want to refine these borders, just make them, a, make them a bit sharper, just so that it looks more, I don't know, more stylized. Thanks for the suggestion, guy. I, I think the the restarting just worked fine. It's just annoying to to break the flow of the stream, but hey, we're not. It's uh, it's one of those things with technology. Anyway, I think we got it working. So now we have this this uh, this detail here that we can go ahead and turn into a quick brush to continue detailing everything. Right, so this is going to be really helpful using the extractor brushes. So you have uh, three extractor brushes. So you have um, here you have the extractor, extractor dot, and extractor drag rect. So the dot one, I don't use it much. That is like a, a really helpful way to maintain consistency in in terms of uh, the size of the detail. Actually, if you are part of my email list this morning. Uh, my morning i send um i send an email showing you how to create your own custom like stitching brushes with some faults um for the stitches itself like for each one of the stitches this drag extractor dot would be really helpful uh but uh yeah the ones that i use the most are the extractor which is kind of like a standard brush and the extractor drag drag now these brushes are just optimized brushes that the pixology guys made so that it's easier for you to just grab details and then use them however this is actually not i mean the brushes are not like the feature itself the brushes are like any other brush just modified so that these work uh, the, the brushes work better with the extractor um feature but the extractor fe feature is just called from mesh i believe so if you go to the alpha palette you have this switch called from brush sorry not from mesh from brush and that basically uh, enables that functionality of grabbing anything so you can do that with the trim dynamic with the standard brush any brush really or most brushes will work in the same way uh, but let's use the this this extractor brushes because they're you know optimized for that so when i click on the drag rect and this brush obviously has the drag rect um stroke type and all we have to do is capture this detail and to do that we can press g on your keyboard or you can press g on your keyboard i have that in a little icon here or like button here just so that i don't have to press g on my keyboard so i can just click on this uh, but i'll show you guys so the first thing you want to do is uh, not not so much with the drag rec but with the extractor you want to set the size of your brush uh, again with the drag rec it's not that big of a deal because you as you drag you change the size of your brush so I'm going to click uh, G on my keyboard and the cursor changes to this blue color and I'm going to click and drag and I want to make sure that I capture the detail within the within the circle now that middle line it's the, it's going to determine the width of the alpha and the direction so you want to keep it perpendicular depending on what you want to do right so if you keep it perpendicular when you let go Sirius is going to capture that detail so it's just going through the process of capturing the depth of that detail and if I check the alpha now we have a pretty awesome alpha already here in Zeroes, right so um, let me just bring in my epic pen right so this circle right the uh, the cursor if you have the middle line like this that is going to be perpendicular to the direction of the detail or uh, whatever you're capturing so I, that's the reason why my detail or like the this 
this scratch is pointing upwards or downwards, right? In, in a very cold fashion because it is perpendicular 90 degrees to that line, okay? So if you want this to be horizontal, all you have to do is align this line in the middle with the actual detail, right? Um, which we can do really easy. We can just click on that on the extractor drag rig, press G, click and drag, and I'm gonna align it like this. Wait until ZBrush captures all that information, and it's just on the go. You can do as many of these as you want, and now the the alpha is changed to this, you know, horizontal view. All right, now that I have captured this, all I have to do is with the same brush, I don't have to do anything weird. I'm just gonna click and drag, and it's giving me, huh, it's giving me something weird. Let me just reset everything. I don't think it did it properly. I'm gonna reset my brushes. Uh, reset all brushes. Okay. Should give me a clean alpha. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. This is not. It's not working the way the way that I was hoping for. Let's try another one. Need to figure out what why why this is happening. Hmm. I'm thinking that um, there's something I cannot think of why this is unless we have some weird things saved, some masking because the the alpha that is creating is not necessarily it's not ideal. Let's see. I'm gonna try something else in a in a plane. Where's my plane? Yeah. Just a quick quick test here. Yeah. I, I don't know why the in the other mesh is not working. So it should give you like a pretty, you know, pretty decent alpha. I'm wondering if maybe it has to do with the thickness of it. Need to figure out what this is. See if I can mask this. I don't know if this is gonna work. Sorry, I'm just like trying to, to figure figure out why this is. But it should give you a pretty decent alpha just by doing this. Um, and that is the whole point of these brushes. But I don't know exactly why it's, it's kind of like flooding in everything. Maybe because of the morph UV. Mm, that might be a problem. Let's see. If we go into the morph UV. So it's giving me this alpha. It's kind of, it's kind of like capturing this, which is a bit strange. It's capturing the flat version of the 3D. Um, I'm going to delete my UVs. Maybe that's going to help. Delete UVs. Let's see if that does anything. Nope, still capturing as a, as a flat image. So not entirely sure why this is. All right, let's make it in a different mesh. Maybe we did something wrong with this mesh. I'm not sure what. Um, if we do it in here, it should be pretty straightforward as well. So let's use the damp standard brush. Use the trim dynamic. This is going to be a faster way of that uh, recreating that detail, of that scratch. And I'm going to use the pinch. Trim dynamic again. All right. Again, this should be a pretty straightforward process with extractor brushes. Let's 
See, this one is working perfectly fine. Um, it's, it's the mesh. There's something wrong with that mesh. I'm not sure what that is. But we have exactly the same things. We have subdivision, everything else. So now it's working fine. Maybe it has, maybe it has some artifacts as well. And that has to do uh, with the subdivision, I guess. So a few, a few things to keep in mind with the extractor brushes. <laughs> but I think it's just the mesh. Like when I was testing them, they were absolutely fine. Not sure what what I'm giving. I'm getting these issues. I'm gonna try it one more time in the flat plane. Um, again, the whole point of these extractor brushes is that you don't have to necessarily do what I'm doing, uh, which is basically. Going to a different tool or a different sub tool and create the details. You can do it ex like you can extract the the details straight from the the mesh that you're working on, and it's been working fine so far. Like I had no problem with these brushes until today. <laughs> Maybe it's all part of the stream. It hasn't. I mean, the day didn't start really really well. To be honest, um, when I woke up and I was having a coffee, I spilled the coffee on my keyboard, and now I have no keyboard. So I am I'm using just the the on screen keyboard to do everything at the moment. <laughs> so the the day didn't start well. So maybe it is all part of it. All right. Let's try this one out. So this one works perfectly fine. Um don't know if it had to do with the with the curvature of it, but but yeah. That's essentially what you can do with the with the extractor brushes. Um you shouldn't have to do do it in a separate tool like I did here. You can just click, click and drag to extract this, and then you have you basically have this to go ahead and you know detail as much as you want. Um, what's great about this, if it works um, as I would have expected, is that you can go ahead and do, let's say, a bunch of these ones, a bunch of these, I don't know, cuts, then add some of the damp standard brush for a smaller scratches like that then use the extractor brush again capture that entire area and this is honestly how I've been using it just do start with one thing capture it duplicate it capture that area and keep going and keep going so now you should have see in this in this case it worked um, so that's how I would use it just add those like that I mean, obviously, this is uh, this is way too much, and this this detail is too big. But again, I'm, I wanna just keep doing this, and then I show you um, the history brush so that you can refine things a little bit more. Okay, this is this is all over the place. It's not there's no real design or anything. Um, I'm just dragging details. Right, so this looks awful, but I can go with the history recall, go back in time before I added any of these details, say around here, set a marking, go back or go forward in time, and then just reduce the amount of these large scratches, which is awesome. Uh, in fact, you can actually do the the smaller scratches for example and then do the larger ones and that way when you go back in time with this history recall brush you won't have to re erase the smaller details uh, but again it's just a, a really easy way to to work like if you don't have the issues that i that i was having um at the end end up working so pretty happy about that just that I can show you. But yeah, if you don't have those issues, it's, it's a pretty smooth process. All right. So again, it's not it's not the best in terms of the, de of the design itself. I can just re remove a few of those. Um, but I want to show you something else. Let's say that I Mm, let's say let's say you know what let's let's do something with color 
So I'm going to paint this in a kind of like a gray, bluish color. Right, I'm going to fill object. Whoops. Fill object. Oh, I have my RGB. Need to increase that intensity. All right, so we have now color. Um, let's go ahead and do something with the with the scratches. Maybe maybe a darker gray and a darker blue. Okay, something like that. And let's go ahead and change to the damp standard brush. And I'm gonna enable RGB for the standard for the damp standard brush. And I'm gonna use a a white yellowish color. Right, so as I add details like this, I'm also adding color. Right, and I'm gonna just concentrate on an area. Yeah, and do some. Uh, we can actually do some bumps holding Alt to invert the selection. We actually have to change the secondary color because if you press Alt, it's gonna select the secondary color. I'm just gonna do some bumps like this. Now, what's awesome about this, um, hopefully if it works, is that you have difference in color and you can capture that and apply it across the model. So let's do that with the extractor brush. Press G. So now I'm capturing both color as well as um, depth information, right? Uh, let me see. Ah, disabling. Yeah, that might be that might be something. Uh, I didn't know if I had it on. That's a good that's a good um, suggestion because I, you know what, that might be the the problem. But we'll see. So now I have this this alpha that I can just apply across the model, and you'll see because I have um, actually let's see, yeah, um, because I have the um, I just want to switch color. Not adding any color where it should. Anyway, I'm applying the I'm applying the alpha with the the color that it was captured. Now, if I want to turn this into a Instead of dragging these details, I want to actually um, draw them like if, if I would with the standard brush. I can take the extractor brush. Um, this one, you'll have to set the size. Press G and do something like that. So the way that you drag that brush is going to capture kind of like a path of what you did. And then you can just use it as a, you know, as another, another sculpting brush like this. So this is really, really handy because you can just go ahead and... Uh, also, you have pressure, and the pressure allows you to control the size of these details. So very quickly, you have, you know, as I said, we only took, I don't know, it took a few seconds just to set the, the initial set of dots and, and bumps, but then you take the two extractor brushes, or you can even just do it straight with the extractor brush, the normal one, um, and produce this set of details very quickly. Right, and that's that's one of the beauties of this update with the extractor brushes. It just enhances the workflow of the detailing process really, like quite a bit. Um, let me just try something else that um, is also really helpful with the with the workflow. I'm gonna turn off, oops, turn off poly paint. Right, and this is kind of like the sculptural side of things that we have. Um, you can also Maybe you use the trim dynamic really quick. There are a bunch of other features. Hopefully we get to I'll at least show you some of the stuff. Um, just with the trim dynamic, I'm going to turn this down a bit. Just tone down the amount of, you know, bumpiness. And I'm going to show you something really cool about this workflow and this process. 
All right. Um, let's say that I want to take this original, um, yeah, the original scratch or damage edge that I have here, um, because it's the one that we spend more time doing. And I actually want to test if the double enabling double and the two side mesh will actually work for um, for capturing it. And that might be my my mistake. But um, you know, we already added all of these dots in here, so it's kind of like ruin the the kind of the, the clean look and feel that we had. So what we can do is use the history recall brush or just simply go back in time, capture that specific moment into a extractor brush and then move forward and continue. So let's go back in time. I think around, just around here is fine. Right, and I'm gonna use the extractor brush, G, extract that. Hopefully, it's going to do it properly. Okay, it worked. So that might be actually something. So that's that's really cool. Uh, all right, so it did it. So now, if I click, I uh, will be able to it to add this specific detail. But if I click now, it's going to erase all the the work that we did. So I have to go back to the go forward in time. Okay. Uh, but I already captured this and this is working nicely now. Okay. So now I have this one that allows me to, you know, add a few more details. I'm going to increase the C intensity. It's going to be pretty harsh. Like that. And I'm going to use this to sort of like damage the the edges we can actually I don't know if we can I'm sure you can uh, with the back facing mask enable so that yeah it doesn't affect the back like we did with all of the other ones uh, it's not a big deal again with the history brush we can just go ahead and, and fix that Maybe this is too much here. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm just placing this a little bit randomly to show you, but um, but at least we know that it's working now, which is cool. Uh, you can also tweak the the alpha itself, so you can change, for example, the uh, where is it? The mid value. So right now it's at 50, and that's, that's why this mid-gray value is. Uh, but you can change that so that it's kind of like pushing in or out a little bit more. Um, totally up to you. Um, but let's say that I want to fix this. Again, we can, we have set this. I don't know if we still have it. Let's see. Yeah. So because we have this point in here in time, we still have it. We can just go back and refine this. This is how awesome the history recall brush is. You just go back in time. Oops, 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 oops. Let's undo all that. Um, I'm gonna turn on back face masking. Try it again. Because this is a relatively thin mesh. Okay. Cool. So it's just, just a matter of turning on um, back facing masking. Um, there's something wrong here. Ooh, I don't know what that is, but it's not good. Need to fix it somehow. I don't know when when I created this problem, but the history recall brush should fix it. Oops, <laughs> this is I'm making a mess of this. All right, there was like some really awful polygons there. I don't know what I did there. I'm gonna go back in time. Okay, it's just when I was dragging, it helped. Anyway, <laughs> just to do I do a quick recap of this mess that we did today. Um, apparently, the double actually makes a difference in how you capture it, uh, which kind of like makes sense, especially with these uh, morph UVs. So 
if it is not giving you the result that you were expecting when you grab it, uh, make sure that double is off in the visibility so that you're only capturing one side. All right. Um, When I get alphas from on a flat surface, I get weird result and a curved one. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like what the the extractor brushes should fix, but I don't know. Um, all right, let me just bring in a. Just to be honest, uh, we're not really working on this or this guy. I'm just showing you features, so uh, it's gonna be better if I just show you some of the some of the stuff that I actually did. With zero, so let me just bring in some of the hang on a second. So let's bring in the little critter character and I'm the and the whale. So I'm gonna show you the um the poly paint features. So this little guy. This little guy, um, I did quite a few. Um, I mean, I use a few of the the new features in this guy, but also uh, one of the main things that I used was was in this one was the uh, adjust by poly paint and also the the UV unwrap, kind of like the morph UV to add some detail. So I'm going to show you that really quickly, uh, which is another feature. And also, I want to bring in the, the humpback whale to humpback whale. This one. Uh, so that I can show you the way that I use the uh, the 3D features or the the draft features, just because I don't have a 3D printer and so I couldn't like really test the the draft analysis and and all of that in a in a real environment like as in the way that they were intended for ZBrush uh, or the the intended use for these features uh, because I don't have a 3D printer. To test it, but I, I found a, a different way to use them, and it's actually quite helpful in a way. Um, so let me show you that first, and then we move into the polypane. We still have like 20 minutes, so I reckon I can show you this. So sorry about the mess with the extractor brushes, but um, a much more a much more uh, in-depth tutorial. You can you can see it in the in the Seabrush, um the intro guide to 2020 in the Seabrush guides website. Um, that's going to be explained a little bit a little bit better with less hiccups than what we had today, technically speaking. Um, can you change the draft colors other than the yellow, red, and green? I think you cannot. You can only change the thickness colors, the thickness, thickness, thickness colors, rather than the draft colors. I'm not sure, uh, but I don't think so. I didn't try, to be honest. This can do, oh, no worries, mate. I, I, I really... I'm really glad that you like the the emails. Glad to glad to hear that. Awesome. Thanks so much guys. All right. So, um let me show you how I use the draft the 3D draft technique. Uh because again, the idea with that is uh where is it? In my transformation palette. So the draft thing is if you turn it on, it gives you this, right? So right now it looks kind of like a mess, but let me just try to find the angle. So it's looking at it from the front. So see this whale is backwards. <laughs> it should be it should be facing this way. This should be the front, but my camera view showed me that it's backwards. So anyway, so right now Seabrush is kind of like applying this uh, draft view from the from this angle. And again, I have like little experience with the with the 3d printing world i've printed a lot of a lot of stuff but most of the time i just set up a quick um dynamesh like a, a quick setup send it over to the person or the company that's actually going to print it and they fix everything and just print right I, have, I haven't actually dealt with the with the manufacturing of it but in a in in an in a nutshell and Again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's basically what the draft technique is doing or the drafting of this angle is doing is if you are doing kind of like a mold, um, I'm going to look at this from the from the side view. If you have something like this, right? Um, Sirius is going to analyze it from the camera view. So, 
right? Like pointing downwards. And it's going to say, okay, these areas, when you create a mold, for example, these areas are going to be totally fine just because uh, you can pull the 3D model out of it, right? Um, but these ones that are kind of like straight down are going to be red or are going to be a bit hard because uh, they're like a straight angle. It's not going to be very easy to on on mold or take this thing out of the mold. And the yellow one is just kind of like maybe these areas that it could be problematic, but not so problematic, right? So what this draft angle allows you to do is visualize this in the 3D model and how it would affect the certain areas that would affect that um, that extraction. So again, my my knowledge of the, the 3D printing world, the actual manufacturing is quite limited, but this is what it's doing. Also, if you change the the angle or by changing the model itself to suit the angle, uh, you can change, let's say, if the white line is the is the side view of the model, you can also have, you can go ahead and fix it and do something more like this, right? And that way, the these vertical lines will all go green because all of these would be pretty easy to, you know, extract. There's no, um, I mean, something, I'm going to do another one here, something like this would be, right, impossible or very hard to extract because when you try to pull it out, so this would be, I reckon, something like that, probably. Right, so when you try to take this, the mold, let's, let's say that the white line is the mold and the blue one is the actual printed object. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, when you try to take this out and push it out, then this little corner is going to sort of like being, is going to be stuck to the, to the mold. Um, in this case, you can probably shift it around and it works, but this is basically what the colors are showing you with the draft. And, um, the live preview of the draft and the draft angle is simply setting from what point you're actually extracting that from the model right so right now you'll see all of these red areas are going to be problematic so it's just a good way to visualize it but anyway that's kind of like the theory behind it hopefully it's, uh, it makes sense um, the way that I use it is because you can set the direction you can click on this set direction and it's going to set the direction based on the camera. So now I can just rotate around and the problematics, problematic areas are going to be these ones, right? Um, so what I did with this specific um, model of the hump, hum, hump whale, humpback whale, <laughs> is to set, at, uh, set the, direction, the direction from the top. So I just hold shift, right? Set the direction, make sure that the perspective was off, right? and click set direction. So now from the top is pretty easy to, to see that everything is clean from the top and then everything from the bottom is not working and there's kind of like a tiny bit of yellow around. Now you can change the, the amount of yellow, which is kind of like the, the in-between good and bad uh, by changing the draft angle. And the draft angle, uh, I think some, like if you if you actually look at, watch the the first episode, on the 7th of this month, um, Paul Gabriel did a, a, a really good presentation of all the features, much better than what I'm doing. Um, and he actually explained this in much more depth and, you know, it's, it's better to, to have a look at that. I'm just going to show you in a different way to use it. So because I have this set already, I can turn this off. I know that the draft angle is set from the top. But uh, one of the cool things is that you can go to the masking palette and you can mask by draft. So this is another tool another feature added in Zverse 2020. So if you click uh, mask by draft, it's going to mask the green part of the that preview. So if I click mask by draft, let's wait until it does it. It's basically going to mask all the areas that were green in the from that angle. So this is extremely helpful, especially in this, in this case, because um, it's going to mask out the areas that I don't need. So I'm going to turn off poly paint. So as you can see, it just creates a mask from the top based on that uh, draft angle, right? So it, it matches the green areas perfectly fine or almost perfectly fine, right? 
Um, what's great about this, I mean, you can do this totally fine with um, manual masking, and I can go ahead and refine things just by holding control and mask these areas. I can invert the mask and then clear this out. So this is essentially what I did for this for this model. I had um, I mask by draft, right, and then refine the mask. But the reason I did it with the um, the draft view or mask by draft is because these areas of the fin, the fins of the of the whale and the tail, they're they're gonna be they're like thin and they're gonna be very hard to mask manually. So let me show you what I mean. So if I invert the mask. Right? And if I were to do this manually, I can hold control and start masking this area, right? But if I turn around, maybe not this in this case. So I'm just masking this and you'll see it's, it's sort of like masking out the other area because it's really, really thin. So just by doing the mask by draft, it allows me to do this mask really quickly. And this is the mask that I ultimately use. Again, I refined it manually a little bit more. So I went like this and Maybe refine the, the edge like so. I also used um, an alpha. So if you hold control, you can actually assign an alpha to the masking brush. So you can go to alpha. We have the alpha on the right hand side. Yes. So if I hold control, you can actually assign a mask, uh, sorry, an alpha to the mask and it's gonna mask that area. So I use something like alpha eight, I believe. So if I hold control and also change the stroke, the stroke, change that to drag rec. So now my uh, mass pen is going to use this alpha and it's going to be drag rec. So I can just hold control and do these type of things. This is how I manually refine the edge and the border of this humpback whale or the border of the mass for this polypaint, right? So I went through all of these bit by bit and then you know you can um, sharpen that mask um, but anyway this is what I did to generate the main colors of the polypaint so you'll see this is roughly the 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 mask that I got um, I'm gonna clear the mask now uh, but this is roughly the mask that I generated from that um, draft angle and then I just manually went ahead and did what I just showed you to to clean it up and make it a little more interesting uh, more detail not as perfect as in yeah not as perfect the transition and then i just filled with um the mask area or the unmask area i fill it with white invert the mask fill it with this bluish color and then went ahead and you know re refined the polypaint so that's how i use the 3d the, the 3d draft analysis or 3d print analysis thingy <laughs> i think it's um it's a it's a really good tool especially for all of you guys that are probably doing 3d printing but um if you're not it still is a very powerful tool that you can implement in your workflow in in you know in many different ways this is just one way all right so let's uh wrap it up here I have about 10 minutes so i can show you uh the polypaint techniques or the polypaint tools which it you know, which are pretty cool with this guy. So I'm gonna go all high. So you can see all the details. Let me see if there is any question or anything. When the new alpha is created, does it automatically save your alpha? Or once it's created, you have to make sure you save the alpha, otherwise it's gone forever. You have to save it. So um, you can generate many. So as soon as you create a, an alpha, it should... So you see all of the alphas that we created in this like testing it and try to find what the problem was they're all created here or they're all stored in the alpha palette as soon as you um, restart zbrush or close zbrush this one these ones will be gone uh, so you'll have to the ones that work for you the ones that you like you have to actually save them or export them uh, but it's just a matter of selecting the one that you want and click export and that's it alrighty so let's see um, where is so I have it already here in my in my UI. So adjust by color. That is the that is gonna launch the this this window. But for you guys is on the, the polypaint palette. So polypaint, here we go. Um, adjust by color. So I'm gonna select something like like the face. That's probably a good one. Uh, this is the one that I found like more interesting to play around with the features. So if I go into solo mode, here I have the head. I'm gonna click adjust by color 
and the head is just a simple sphere. Okay, so basically what we have here is just a series of swatches of, of colors that we can select. We can click and select one in the, let's say if I want to change just these, the, the blues of the, of the character and not the dark area, or even just the line, the white line. Uh, maybe this is a good one. So I'm going to click on this, click and drag, and I'm going to select this white area. And you'll see it automatically kind of like mask everything. Um, I found these hide materials and hide mask uh, to be really helpful when I'm trying to figure out what is the next color or how I'm going to change things. So if I hide material and hide mask, now the mask is still there and the materials of course are still there, but hiding materials allows me to see a, a version of the, of the color with no information of the material obviously, so there's no influence of the light or, or the material properties itself. Like, the, the actual property materials are not visible. I just see the polypane, okay? And hiding the mask obviously allows me to see, uh, you know, a proper version of the color. So with the mask, it's just gonna be a, a darker version. So now we can just go ahead and use any of these tools here. So hue saturation values here, um, the, the intensity in RGB, the contrast and the gamma. Uh, this little swatch here only affects the tint. So if I wanna tint this, I can just push it all the way to one, um, but right now it's set to white, so it's just tinting with white. But I can just do, let's say, red or yellow. Let's let's go for a yellow just to make it very interesting. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty it's pretty accurate. The tolerance of this is going to change what um, the the amount of value, like the the reach of the range of the value that is being masked. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, it's kind of like the uh, the I think it's fuzziness in the select by color. So if you go to select and select by color, it's similar to the fuzziness. Um, so I can just reduce the tolerance. And you see by reducing the tolerance, I don't know if it's very visible here. Uh, these little dots here, they were they were yellow because they're closer to a white color or a similar color to the, to the line, right? So I'm also changing the colors in these little dots. So by changing the tolerance, I can reduce that. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I just click OK, clear the mask, and those changes are applied to the model. Um, I can go ahead and do, keep doing this and change more things on the fly. I can just go adjust color and say, you know what? I want to change the color, the blue color, to a, I don't know, maybe a, a red color would be interesting. Uh, but this is another great thing, right? You can just do this as many times as you want and, and produce as many variants. And it's like it's ideal for prototyping and, and iterating uh, when you're designing. So I'm going to select the blue one, like so. Oh, actually, this dot here in the middle, right? I'm going to increase the tolerance, right? And I'm going to change the hue. What did we say? Something like an orangey or red. Let's make it green. Actually, that's that's kind of fun. I'm gonna hide materials and hide mask, and I'm gonna contrast the. In this case, I want to contrast the green color, so the green channel. Or, no, the blue channel. No, the red channel. Oh, nope. I think it's the green channel. Yeah, I just want to make, but I'm gonna change the contrast actually in minus. So I I want to get um, rid of this the harsh, dark shadows of the green here. Um, I can increase the the actual hue, the, the actual saturation and intensity. All right, so that's a quick change for this color, for the entire color of this uh, character of the head. When I click OK, clear the mask, and there we go. So that changes colors quite rapidly. Um, another cool thing is, let's say, I'll let's do it again. Um, and I'm going to show you a mix of the different features. So I'm going to go to adjust color. And I'm going to this time select this color, the black one. And maybe with a tint. I don't know. I'm going to go for something radically different. So that is very obvious what I'm going to do. Okay, click OK. Your mask. 
All right, so as you can see, that changes things completely just by doing that uh, very quickly. Change and, and it's very accurate the way that you can mask out areas of your uh, polypaint. Uh, what's really good about this is that once you have this or this set of um, yeah this this set of different variations or these variations in color, you can I'm gonna go into solo mode. You can use the history brush and come back and create a very interesting uh, pattern. And this is kind of like what I did with the with one of the monster blob things. Uh, let me just show you. So that you know which one I'm talking about. All right, so have it in our station here. So this guy. So for this one, I used a similar approach to what I'm going to show you, uh, which I had different patterns, um, like full covered patterns uh, and again this is also in the in the quick intro guide to 2020 you can have a look at this in more detail but i have different meshes exactly the same mesh but with different patterns and different poly paint colors and then using the history brush i projected different patterns in different sections so this is what i'm going to show you so with the history brush i have that selected i can go back to the beginning of time here yeah, where i had the original color and i can just set up point in there make sure that rgb is selected go back in time and now uh, also with symmetry oh i don't have symmetry in this one and with the history brush i can just bring back turn off c sub just in case i can bring back that color so you can create all of these patterns which is crazy <laughs> it's really really cool so Let's just do, let's just do something. So you can see roughly what I, what I did with that monster blow thing. Right? This is a lot of fun just to try different things. Another thing is that, let's say, I actually want to preserve this area. I can go back in time to some other place. Let's say this, this time, set a marking with control and click, go back and uh, go forward, and then just recover just this uh, black color on this area. So this is what I mean that you can have um, multiple variation of the, sa of the same character, multiple color variation, um and then simply like you can do that in in different steps so you have a complete variation of color then uh you know the inverse colors then move forward then desaturate everything then move forward and keep doing that so in your history on do history you're going to have a series of variation in color and then you can go back to those times using the history brush and pick exactly what you want so another great thing about this let's say i want to go back to before that. So I, I want to go back to this point, right? Four in time. I want to recover all of this. Be aware of the, um, the, the, the origin of this brush, I believe is the, the matchmaker or the projection. Yeah, I think it's the matchmaker. So because that works based on the camera, I believe this is the, like the origin of this brush. Um, but that, because that works on on a projection basis based on the camera, uh, be aware of the edges. All right, so just just by doing that, I went back to what I had in here. All right. So one thing you can do is um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. So I can go ahead and go to surface noise, for example, and just add a bit of noise. So you'll see this is the type of noise that I'm getting. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna exaggerate it quite a bit so that you can see the difference. Click OK. All right, so now I have this noise. I'm gonna apply it to the mesh. So this changes, all of this is, is happening in this point in time. Now I'm, I wanna go back to a point that I didn't have or that I don't have the details in the in depth or that noise and that the color is different. And I'm gonna bring back that. 
uh, bring back uh, those colors. So I'm gonna go back to let's say this point, right? Set a marking in here. Go forward in time. And now whatever I do is going to not only uh, if I enable CSOP, is not only recovering the color from that point, but it's also recovering the depth. So um, if I don't want, I don't know, if I don't want the details in here and I want a different color just in the center, I can go ahead and manually do this, right, and recover that. But I'm also changing the, the line a little bit, which is pretty cool. So this brings me to my next point, which is the mask by poly paint. So the mask by, mask by, by <laughs> The mask by polypaint is basically the same thing as adjust colors, but it's only for masking. So I have it here and for you guys should be on the masking palette. If you click on, um, if you expand mask by color and click on mask by polypaint, that's essentially what I have here. Click on that and you'll see the, the window that appears is pretty similar to what I showed you before, uh, but you don't have any adjustments at the bottom because this is just for masking. So what I can do is select the color that I want. I'm gonna hide colors so that I can see just the mask that I'm trying to do. And this is a pretty pretty decent mask straight away. Uh, you can also blur the mask a tiny bit here just to, to have less of that uh, sharp contrast. Click OK. So now what I have is a mask. I'm gonna invert the mask, hide it. So I still have the mask that I created with the mask by polypaint. And I still have my my reference that I created with the history uh, history recall. So I can now go ahead and very freely go ahead and paint these areas that I had masked and clear that. So now, oops, to increase the C intensity a bit more. To get rid of the details all right clear the mask and now i have you know not only the details or that level of that surface plus the polypane in here so this is like super super handy now there's um there's something else that i think is quite quite weird um we we discovered this like i did um, a live session when this was released to my students um with my students in the in the extra mile and as we were working we discovered this thing which i thought it was like you know mind blowing uh which are which is like the uh it's kind of like you can set a marking in the future with this brush but then go back to the go back in time and still recall the future <laughs> I don't know if that, all right, I'm going to try to make sense of this as I show it. Uh, it's a crazy feature. I don't know how you want to use it, but um, I found it like really interesting. And, and the fact that it works is just crazy. So basically with this brush selected, uh, in this moment of time, so my current present, right? Um, I'm going to hold control and click to set a marking. So I'm basically recording my current present. Yeah. Now I'm going to go back in time to an area that I want to continue working from, let's say from here, right? So this set of colors or even, now I think this one is going to be very easy to show. All right, so this is uh, a moment in the past that I just went back in the past. And as soon as I do anything with this brush or I try to paint or anything from this point, ZBrush is going to delete my future and my past is going to become my present and, but it's still going to have the recall of that future. So hopefully, that, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I'm going to try to explain it a little bit better because it's really, it's really cool. I'm going to turn this off. Um, you, you can see that. Cool. So let me just wrap it up because uh, I think I have to go now, but really quickly, I'm going to show you what I mean by all this. And this is going to, I mean, I was blown away by this, uh, the fact that this works. So let me just show you. We're just doing a quick save on me. On. All right. So this one is the future, right? And this is the, the mark of the current state, right? With the history brush. So so this is with history brush, we recall that moment in the future. Then we went back to the past. So this is the past, right? 
and we have this set of polypin right so uh, at the moment we just have two things we have a marking in the future and we are back in the past so nothing nothing weird in here but as soon as we start doing anything uh anything at this point so if i start painting right uh let's yeah using the at this point here right after the past right so this moment is going to become become my new present and Sirius is going to delete my future, <laughs> right? So I won't have any of these points in time, right? But what's crazy is that even though there's no undo his or forward history, or there's no uh, future because Sirius deleted as soon as you um, do something, it's just going to delete the history. Uh, Sirius still recalls that marking that we did in the future, although it's not it, non-existent, and we will be able to recover what we did what we did in the future but from the past <laughs> if that makes any sense all right let's just try to do it and see if it works so again i have the mark in the future and i am currently in the past as soon as i start using this uh, history recall brush um, i'm going to get a warning so let's say let's say here i'm getting this warning so anything that is forward from this point onwards is going to be deleted right no undo history so everything that we did after this point is going to gonna be gone click ok and as you can see that marking is also gone this is the crazy part right so we have deleted our future but because the history brush has that information in somewhere in the memory we can just go ahead and bring back that future hopefully that makes sense i mean it's it's a it's i was very excited when i found this i don't know how i'm gonna use it but it's really cool right um what's even better so yeah i can just go back and go back to that exact point in the future now what's really cool about all of this you can undo all this and still have my marking in there um is that not only this brush not not only works with the normal um the normal alphas or strokes you can just change everything so let's say that i want to do some dots or some details in this head uh with the marking in the future so i can just select a different stroke let's say spray and change the alpha to alpha i don't know alpha 40 no maybe alpha 47 something bigger right and i can just go ahead and do no this is too much alpha 40 and increase the intensity so i can just do this with the history brush and basically bring back the details of that future but only in that area that i'm trying to apply so this is absolutely crazy but i love it um there's some practical some practical uses for this definitely like what i'm just doing is in a practical sense is pretty good um but just the fact that that works it blew my mind <laughs> so i just wanted to share that with you guys um, that's cool and all, but you can also duplicate your subtool from any point in history and keep all your history and feature in the main subtool if you want. Um, it works between separate tools. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that. And that's, that's essentially what I did with the monster in, in reality. I just duplicated different options and put it in. Like I said, it doesn't, like in, as a matter of fact, uh, I can just go back in time, set a, a mark in there, and then recover all, the, doing the inverse of what I'm doing. But I, I just thought it was like an, an interesting thing. And that's the type of things that I like to, like, you know, if if that's the possibility, there's, I'm sure there is something that can be used with that. Um, but yeah, so what is Speaking Nation is doing, or suggesting is basically you can have, this is the last thing, and I'll wrap it up. So I'm going to duplicate this. Right, so it's a different subtool um, all together and I'm going to adjust by color and then completely change this like that so this is a completely different color so I have these two subtools right so I can set a marking in a separate subtool that lives uh, roughly in the same space and it's roughly the same size and everything the same volume as the other one so this is an exact duplicate and all I have to do is with the historical brush hold control click on that Go back to this one and now Sirius is remembering that other subtool is going to project these purple and green colors to this. So this is essentially what I did for the monster. Oops, let's change stroke.
right? So you can get some really crazy stuff happening, very colorful. Again, what, what it's doing is just basically taking this other um, tool. That, again, you can have all the history in there and then apply it in here. And you can also do it backwards, right? You can also hold control in here, set the mark in here, go to this one that already has information from both, and then do something like that. So very, very interesting stuff. Um, definitely a, a whole world of possibilities that you can use with these with these features. Um, I think I covered some of them. Um, the, the main ones, which are the Morph UVs, the extractor brushes, and the Adjust by Polypane, uh, the draft as well. There are a few things that I would probably like to go in more um, detail. But again, if you want to have a, a full review of most, I would say most, if not all of the features, uh, you can go to the ZBrush Guides website and it's in there. Um, just really quickly, let me see if I missed anything. And then I'll wrap it up here. It's intensity, cool, you get better alphas, yep, yep, just in case. Um, didn't miss anything, disable both. New polypene thumbnail. Yeah, okay. I think I pretty much answered everything. Khalil, Khalil is asking, um, will you do another course, another character design course? I'm not sure which one you mean. So currently the, the extra mile is all about that. It's about character design. It's not open. Uh, I don't know if that's what you mean, that if it's going to open anytime soon. Like I said, I'm going to try to do, uh, to open the, to open a space um, at the end of the year. But it's gonna be a pretty pretty tight window um just to control a little bit the 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 amount of people that I can take in, especially at that time of the year uh but yeah, I'll definitely let you guys know awesome all right, I think I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by um definitely have some fun with the new features. It's absolutely fantastic uh and again once more once one one more time if you wanna have a, a look at the serious guide, it's just there um it's kind of like an in-depth analysis of what my experience was with the with the features and how I use them. Um, definitely, there's way more uh, options than what is in there, but uh, that that should give you a, a quick intro and a quick start guide to to the new feature. So, um, again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next week. I think on the 26th, if I'm not mistaken, 26th for me for my time. So for some of you guys in LA, 25th. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next week and take care. See you guys.